interrupt this program to bring you a special report. Welcome to the 2023 Dakar Rally Edition of the Chasing Waypoints Podcast. Bringing you daily updates as competitors take on over 5,000 miles in 15 days across the Arabian Peninsula. Don't forget, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any updates. And if you haven't already, make sure to follow us on Instagram at Chasing Waypoints for more updates and news from the bivouac. That being said, let's get to it. All right, what is going on, guys? Good morning. I'll have you know that the only reason I have this much energy is uh, brought to you in part by... Oh, never mind. They don't sponsor the show yet. So let's just say there's some uh, coffee and protein mixed together. It's all about efficiency around here, especially this early in the morning. Speaking of efficiency, damn, do we have some news? Well, I mean, I knew I, I, I kind of had a hunch it was, you know, I maybe mentioned it in one spot only, but then I was like, okay, well, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about much about it because I have an idea of what's going to happen. And, uh, and it came to fruition and I'm absolutely excited about that. Um, scratching my eye. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Things you guys can't see, but you know, are doing on the air. Okay. That is wrap. Stage number five is done. And the competitors are getting ready. So I was looking forward to bringing some information to you. And then right as I'm getting ready to start recording uh, on Sporty at the the update comes through. Hey, stage six uh, information has been delayed to 20 hours, uh, which playing the home game is 21 hours here. But it's actually on the other side of the clock. So I don't know. 9 a.m., 10 a.m., 11 a.m. Either way, I will be at work at that time, so I won't be able to do the stage preview uh, as I had planned, but not a big deal. Uh, I can maybe jump on later on today, or maybe we can post it if you guys are following on the Instagram, Chasing Waypoints, at Chasing Waypoints. Okay, let's get right to it. So, today's stage, a little bit of a doozy, right? Let's get a little closer. here. I can hear the echo. Eventually, we're going to upgrade Adventure Taco Studios, you know, uh, to, to get rid of some of this, uh, some of this echo. Uh, let's see here. All right. We are on Thursday stage number five. That was what these guys did. 646 kilometers total is what they ran. So definitely a longer day. 375 of those were on the selective section or special stage. So that is the actual competitive part of the stage. So let's get a rundown here. 646 times 0.62. 400 and a half miles is what these guys rode today. So backing it up, these have been long days, average of about 300 miles. Today was one of the above average days with 400 miles total that the competitors did. Uh, 375 kilometers of special stage uh, translates into 232 miles of actual racing. So definitely a challenge. They said this was the first stage that they were going to see basically sand and more sand. So I'm, what I thought was going to happen happened, and definitely the riders that, that are quick in the sand and they could ride uh, obviously kind of floated to the top. We did have uh, a shakeup that on the uh, American side of things, you know, we didn't want to see it, but we know what happened, and there was an issue with some fuel. Talked about it in the last episode, if you guys uh, listened to that one, and there was, a there was a bit of a rush there, right, to figure out what the ASO was going to do. Uh, then I under my understanding that they did come around and tell the, the teams, hey, you may want to clean out your gas tank. So further admitting that there was uh, water in the tanks uh, or, you know, fuel con contaminated fuel at the fuel stop, which absolutely sucks. And the guy taking the biggest hit on that one was none other than Mason Klein. So uh, unfortunately, he had to pull over to the side. If you guys follow him on his social media uh, or he may have. He shared it on his social media. There were some pictures floating around of it. Uh, but if you haven't subscribed, you should subscribe and you can kind of get an inside peek as to what's going on uh, for one of the front runners at the 2023 Dakar rally. So uh, head over to his uh, profile right down in the middle there. You can click on the subscribe stuff and you can get some of the behind the scenes things, including which was actually really badass uh, is the onboard video of him at the uh, prologue stage. 
uh, the foot cam, which was really, really cool watching him, you know, get, I mean, just absolutely loose into these corners and just drift this bike like, you know, it's flat track style. Uh, I still don't know how they do that. I don't know if I would have the talent to ever do that. I kind of want to. I mean, you got to do it for the gram, right? So anyway, so yeah, that was the that was the rundown there. Let's go stage five here. All right. So this time for stage five, if you guys heard the recap yesterday, 144, 145 kilometers right up front. So the longer liaison was in the front, not by much. I actually kind of split it right down the middle, 145 in the morning and 130 kilometers in the evening. So 145 times 0.62. All right. 90 miles in the morning is what they had to commute to get to the start of the special stage uh and then when they were on their way home they were going to have to ride another 80 miles after the end of the stage so liaisons it's an interesting thing right basically you're trying to pick the best spot to house this city of you know that according to uh our our friends at the american rally originals if you guys heard the episode before the rally uh, we were talking with David and Jim Pearson and they were saying that they have an estimate of about 9,000 meals that they have to serve a day. So that's absolutely crazy. They've got this floating city that they've got to ring. So they got to make room for this floating city. That floating city just doesn't fit anywhere. Yes, there's plenty of room in Saudi Arabia, but that still doesn't mean you can just put it wherever you want. Uh, so you are going to have to commute from where that city is to where the start of the stage is. Now, the cool part about that is, is there's there's a couple of things, too, is by keeping the liaison secret or, you know, like how they have them as programmed into the ERTF unit, then you help eliminate that, you know, like map men and, and doing that. Now, they've already done a good job about that. Right. So for those of you who don't know, uh, map men were the people that uh, certain teams would hire and they would feed them the road book. And with basic information, these guys were basically able to recreate the map and even then recreate the map and let them know, hey, when you get to know 177, just keep straight on that road and then jump down to one note 190. You'll be right on top of the waypoint. So one kilometer, two kilometers, 20 kilometers, you know, they, there's some trickery that could be done with that. Uh, so much so that a couple of years ago, the ASO actually stopped competitors mid rally. Uh, and pulled the road book, half the road book that they had already competed on out of the bikes for review. And some of the bikes were even caught with notes on their tank of, you know, what they needed to do in the direction. So they're very, very, very concerned about, you know, keeping the secrecy of the route, keeping the information secret. This is just part of rally, right? Because the competition is not just riding the bike. It's also navigating the terrain and navigating this map, you know, so They've done a really good job. I think they've really moved forward on that one. Obviously, there's been some questionable rule changes that they've done in the past to get to the point that they're at now. Some stayed, some didn't. Uh, but I think that they're carrying over some of the good stuff. So uh, let's get back to it here. All right. So 54% of today's route was going to be sand and then with about 46% of it dunes. Uh, that's how they classified it from what I understand on a quick briefing that I saw from Mason. Again, um, it was it, he was ready for sand all day. Uh, which sounds pretty good. Uh, and if they had some rain, the dunes probably weren't as challenging as they could have been if it was just sugar sand from being super dry. So uh, let's see here. All right. So if you guys saw it, you guys know what happened with Mason as far as the start goes. He was going to be starting all the way back from 11th. Uh, which was an absolute bummer because uh, he had been leading the rally and, and was top three in podiums and podiums and podiums already. So really, really cool to to see that he's competitive all the way up at that level, uh, which is even, an even better performance than he did last year. So this year he's, he's a noted improvement on his riding and then obviously his navigation has been on point last year and this year as well. Uh, even running some really clean stages with zero errors in navigation, which is awesome considering the length of some of these road books. So, all right. What does it look like today? Uh, let's look at the latest rankings. Let's go view more standings. Come on. Waiting on the internet here. Uh, I don't know why I jumped to the map. That's not what I want to see. I want to see the stage results. Okay, so far. Let's see, I don't know where they're where they're moving to here. That is the general standings. That is this one. 
So let's see. It looks like, oh, and as I am saying this, there is a refresh. Let me let me check the other app because this has been an interesting thing. I guess there was a rider that was down at the beginning or towards the end of the stage and somebody had stopped and there was supposed to be a shakeup of the results. Uh, so let's take a look here. Yeah, oh, that is not what I wanted to see, but uh, good on them. I mean, that's it. It is what it is. Uh, but you've got... Uh, Leading the way, first on stage, number five, Adrian Van Beveren, uh, finishing up with four hours, 27 minutes, and 28 seconds. And then you have Nacho Cornejo, also, uh, obviously, Adrian Van Beveren this year, uh, debut at the Dakar on the Monster Energy Honda team. Uh, then right behind him, you have Nacho Cornejo, uh, Florimo, Monster Energy Honda team, 13 seconds back. So definitely uh, right on I mean, literally on his toes for considering a 400 mile stage. That is a really good, um, that is a really, really good showing. So let's take a look here. Yeah, they're, they're doing something with the times cause they're not showing like the full results, uh, like they do in the other part of the app. They normally will show like the total time they'll show the gap. Uh, and then, uh, here we go. Let's see. We'll, we'll get it from their, their mobile app here. Sorry about all the confusion here. Okay, so here we go. So Nacho Cornejo, uh, Adrian Van Beveren. Yeah, see, now the app is... There's there's some confusion. All right, guys, here's the official. It's unofficial. So the unofficial right now standings for stage number five, Nacho Cornejo leading the way, 427-41, Adrian Van Beveren, 428-09, and then it is going to be Toby Price in the number three spot, uh, 431-43. Meanwhile, Mason Klein in the number four spot. <laughs> Starting 10th and finishing 4th with 4 hours, 32 minutes, and 41 seconds. Skylar Howes in the number 5 spot on the Husqvarna factory racing bike. 434, 48 seconds. Then is Matthias Walkner on the Red Bull KTM factory racing bike. 434, 58. Followed by Kevin Benavides on the Red Bull KTM factory racing. 437, 45. So once again, another stacked field here. Luciano Santolino on the Sherco Factory GP 438-44 followed by Pablo Quintanilla on the Monster Energy Honda team. 438-51 for him and Gonchalves on the Sherco Factory 439-50. That is your top 10 on stage number 5 of the 2023 Dakar Rally and look at that stack 427, 428, 431, 32, 34, 34, 37, 38, 38, 39. Literally, that is an absolute stacked field. So if this is not a competitive Dakar, I don't know what is. Uh, that is the latest rankings right now at this moment. Uh, let's see on the standings. We've got that one figured out. Uh, Toby Price did pick up some bonus time today. Uh, looks like about 19 seconds. Uh, moving that one down. So moving uh, Mason down to fourth. So that was your top 10 for the stage results. Uh, let's look at, let's see if we can pull up here. If they're going to show the standings here in the bike category. Yes, there is a shakeup and it is none other than now Skylar house, your overall leader of the 2023 Dakar rally after stage number five on the Husqvarna factory racing bike, 23 hours, 16 minutes and 37 seconds with Toby price on the Red Bull KTM factory racing bike, two minutes and seven seconds back. Kevin Max Benavidez in the third spot on the Red Bull KTM factory racing bike. Going to be another five minutes and 16 seconds behind them. And then Mason Klein now fourth overall on the rally on the BAS World KTM racing team bike. That is six minutes and 12 seconds off the pace of Skylar Howes. Rounding out the top five is going to be Adrian Van Beveren. Going to be eight minutes and 54 seconds back from the leader on the Monster Energy Honda. And now just to get an idea, it's interesting. They're not publishing the stage time like they did before on this. Uh, so my guess is, is they're probably still doing some work. But uh, Adrian Van Beveren aboard the Monster Energy Honda team. It looks like Mason's got a little over two minutes of room uh, to breathe there. So that is absolutely awesome to see that. Let's see here. I mean, let me I'm looking in multiple places here because now this is like kind of confusing that they're not they're not publishing certain times or certain 
certain things. So that my guess is, is that it probably has something to do with what they've delayed on the information. They probably got some stuff they're working on. The app is running super, super slow. So a lot of people are probably checking on it and, and loading up the servers. Uh, then again, also everybody here on the U.S. time side of thing or on the U.S. side is probably waking up to check the results and whatnot. So what we've got right now is tentative. This is what's posted on the app as of 6.40 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, John Pareda on the Monster Energy JB team finishing 9 minutes and 24 seconds back or currently 9 minutes and 24 seconds back from the leader. Pablo Quintanilla in the number 7 spot. Monster Energy Honda team, he is 10 minutes and 26 seconds back. Followed by Daniel Sanders on the Red Bull Gas Gas Factory racing bike. He is 17 minutes and 50 seconds back. Ninth, Nacho Cornejo on the Monster Energy Honda team. 22 minutes and 4 seconds back. And teammate to Skylar Howes rounding out the top 10. Luciano Benavides. Husqvarna Factory Racing going to be 25 minutes and 3 seconds back. So 25 minutes separate the top 10 bikes right now. Your closest gaps are Toby Price to Skylar Howes. Skylar Howes, your current overall leader two minutes and seven seconds back and then from there it's another two minute gap for kevin benavides to toby price and then from mason klein to kevin benavides is a one minute gap that is not less than a minute 58 no 56 seconds 56 second gap to these two that is absolutely crazy so third to fourth so mason right there on the podium on that slingshot I, I, I just, I knew it was like, I, you know, starting 11th way back, fresh tracks, some tracks to follow. We talked about it yesterday. Na- Mason's still a hell of a navigator. So not necessarily that has a whole lot of bearing on it. Like he gains from it, but not as much as other people gain from it based on navigation skills. So he's, uh, he's ready to say, nope, everybody went that way, but I know it's this way. So that is very, very important. So for those of you playing the home game, let's go back and do a little bit of uh, education on this. So tracks to follow everything is fine and dandy until everybody decides to make the wrong thing or you get to a fork in the road and 10 people went that way and 10 people went that way and now you got an issue now you got to make it well a common mistake that occurs and a lot of people get kind of sucked into this because it gets easy is they lose their place in the road book they're kind of figuring it out doing what they need to do and they forget that they have to navigate on their own road book as well and this is where you catch things so Last year's Dakar, early on in the rally, that was one of the things that put Mason out front or helped put him out front was his ability to find one of the waypoints when other people were struggling to find it. That was absolutely key in keeping him up front. That cost a lot of the factory teams a ton of time, literally right then and there, changed their Dakar from the right from the beginning. Ricky Brabeck, one of the noted ones there that uh, suffered from that one, and it is unfortunate. It sucks. It's a, you know, people will, will regard it as a weaker note in the road book, but some people find it. Some people don't. And in that one, Mason coming out ahead for that one. So he's been navigating clean this rally and been do, putting in a really, really good show considering this is his first time uh, as being promoted late in the race to uh, rally GP. So now in the pro class uh, coming up from the uh, rally two class. So I think that this year is going to be a very, very important year as far as his career goes going forward uh, with the rally. He has done very, very good so far uh, and no signs as to why this would not continue on in the rally. So I'm happy to see where he's at. I think he's within striking distance of the podium, obviously, uh, and even striking distance of picking up that big W, which would be awesome. He is officially the youngest stage winner for the 20. Uh, for the Dakar rally and it came at the hands of stage number three for uh, this year let me make sure of that I feel like there's been a it's weird because now I feel like this has been a a longer nope it was stage number no it was stage number there it is stage number two my bad so stage number two of the 2023 Dakar rally is when the record was set for the youngest competitor uh, and that is to win a stage and that is Mason Klein. So that was again on stage number two. So a lot going on. I'm curious to see what's going to happen with this next one uh, or this next stage. 
Uh, stage number six, we will definitely get you guys the stage rundown as soon as it becomes available. I'll try and figure out how to get that out. Uh, but I'm definitely looking forward to it. These are the results for it. We do know a little bit about stage number six. I can give you guys that information right now at the moment. Uh, so another big day. And this is actually a much bigger day. So getting into the weekend, we're getting really close to the rest day. And man, are these guys going to need it. By the halfway point, they would have ran 3,300 miles by the time they reached the rest day, which is tomorrow, today, tomorrow, and one more day. So three more stages before the rest day. Tomorrow, though, is going to be the longest stage they have ran so far, 877 kilometers total. So let me get that on the calculator here. 877 times 0.62. 543 miles total is what they're going to be running tomorrow. So that is a absolutely brutally long stage. Uh, 543 miles total uh, of those 543 miles total. Let's see here. Stage six. 254 of them are going to be commuting and then 288 of those miles are going to be competitive stage or special stage selective stage. You know, you guys know it. SS. That's how normally it gets referred to SS1, SS2, SS3, SS4. So this is going to be a long day. I think a lot of people are going to get tired. This is where maybe it's going to start to show how tough the rally has been. I mean, it already has, um, but I just think it's going to be just a little bit more crispier uh, for tomorrow. But they're not done yet. Uh, They're going to back up tomorrow's 877 kilometer stage or 500 plus mile stage with a 641 kilometer. And then right before just that, you know, that that goodbye, you know, that like congratulations, you made it to the rest day. They got another 722 kilometers. So uh, 195 of commuting, 252 of race. uh, And then on that is for stage eight. Stage seven is 104 commuting and 293 miles uh in uh race stage and and then of course tomorrow you know 543 total with 254 of that uh going to be the commuting and then 288 of that is going to be the competitive stage so they got some work to do tomorrow as well so we're looking forward to that one and seeing what happens but i am absolutely stoked to see mason klein right now sitting how it sits right at the last update i was stoked because it was it was showing it was third place for a long time for him uh and then all of a sudden it updates and toby price gets into that third spot and then moving mason down to the fourth spot so we'll see it sounds like they're still shuffling stuff around stay tuned make sure you're following the dakar rally instagram make sure you're following the at chasing waypoints instagram and if you haven't already make sure you get over to mason klein's uh, Instagram and get subscribed to that one. Also, you know, following, uh, Skylar house at Skylar house One Ten. That's the other one you guys want to be following. And then of course you have the American rally originals, uh, on Instagram, you have race and ACE for, uh, ACE Nilsson, Jacob Argybrand nine one one. Uh, and then you have, let's see who else. And then Peter Angelo Vec under Wolfie racing. So you got a few different people you could be following on Instagram if you are listening to this from the U.S. side of it uh, and talking to those guys and what they are uh, or following along on what they are doing. So I am absolutely excited to see how this how this shakes down. I'm hoping they're done with this whole results shakeup and we can get some official times uh, on stage and we can continue on from there on to stage number six. Again, stay tuned for the information or the breakdown of stage number six. I will get that out to you guys as soon as I can. Make sure you are following uh, at Chasing Waypoints as I will put uh, put the information there. So anyway, with that being said, guys, don't forget, shiny side up on the gas, and it'll make sense when you get there. Enjoy the ride. All right, that is a wrap for the Chasing Waypoints podcast this week. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like what you heard. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and a bunch of others. Also, follow us on social media. You can find us on Facebook under Chasing Waypoints, Instagram, Chasing Waypoints underscore official, and, of course, the YouTube under Chasing Waypoints. Hope everybody has a good week. We will see you guys for the next episode. Remember, shiny side up. And don't forget to tag us. We want to see where you guys are riding and what you guys are up to. Have a great week. Peace.